Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'm excited to release two new components that I've finally gotten into stock after a couple months of design. Uh, many of my past clients and actually more of my potential clients have come to me and asked me about this cable and, and these type of power supplies to give you a breakdown of exactly what we're looking at. I naturally wanted to do a video because I feel that there's a point of logic in which you guys requested these units and of course why I brought them to market and really as more of my novice guys, my new guys, my rookies that tend to get involved with CNC and want to learn as much as possible, I wanted to bring the logic to why these components have come to fruition. Um, first I want to start with the power supply. Now in CNC we all know there's a plethora of power supplies to select. Uh, you're always looking at um, different voltages, different amperages, um, and usually when you're building your electronics, what comes into play is many of my new guys don't realize how many units they're going to require. Breakout boards typically require 5 volts, they can go up from there. Um, your cooling system is going to require a segregated power supply typically. And then of course we're also looking at our drives, which also require their own power supply and whatever other accessories you're going to input in the system. That being said, anything we can do to eliminate the amount of power supplies being used has multitudes of benefits. Let's cover a couple. First one's going to be naturally cost. Um, less power supplies, less cost. Second one's going to naturally roll over into cost, which will be less real estate, meaning you're naturally not going to need an enclosure uh, quite as large because, again, you're not mounting more and more power supplies. Labor. Uh, you're, again, you're not wiring, you're not drilling, you're not machining. All of that stuff comes into play. So what we've got here is a 150 watt dual rail CNC automation design power supply. And what that simply means, because I get questions on dual rail output all the time, is it means that the power supply supports two different voltages. Okay, what we've got here, and you can see one, two, three, four, five, real simple, four and five supports 48 volts at three amps. One supports five volts at two amps, and two and three are your COM or your V negative inputs for your power supply. Okay, I didn't want to stop there. Of course, I have international clients all over the world, and the biggest thing about the international clients is that they want to make sure that they can use these units too, and of course, I want that as well. Uh, this unit does support the typical uh, 100 to 120 volt input, and it also supports 200 to 240, so everybody around the world is golden. And on top of that, you can see the breakdown here. We've got uh, you've got the breakdown as far as the diagram. You've got one stands for 5 volt 2 amp, 2 and 3 stands for your COM or your V negative input on the power supply, and of course 4 and 5, that's your positive 48 volt 3 amp terminal hookups. Okay, real simple. Um, again, going to save you time, going to save you electrical noise. I cannot emphasize that enough. The more power supplies you add, the more noise you add in your system. Any power supply you can reduce in adding, like I said, the money you're going to save, the cost of labor, uh, the EMI, it all adds up. And again, this keeps things simple. And why I chose these voltages, because I know that's a question that's common. It comes up all the time. 48 volts is, a, is really more of an industrial voltage designed around industrial cooling systems. Uh, why I have two outputs for 48 volts is because I wanted it to support two of my 48 volt fans. Uh, my fans are brushless, they're rated to 100,000 hours, which typically will exceed the life of your system, on top of the fact that they are very, very high CFM fans. Now, CFM stands for cubic feet a minute. Why I went with uh, those type of fans is because using two of them, many of you will decide to do the right thing and use them in conjunction in what's known as a push-pull configuration, where one fan is actually pulling air in and one, air, one fan is actually pushing air out. So when you do it in that configuration, you never allow your enclosure to basically heat up or the components around it because you're always basically bringing in ambient cool air. Um, the output number one, of course, that's pretty self-explanatory. We need a 5-volt output because breakout boards, at least 98% of them on the market, all support 5 volts. So again, bundling this in packages, I am doing that as well. Uh, I will have the power supply separately. I will have the power supply bundled with my, my uh, breakout board system. I will also have it bundled with my autonomous fan control system because 
I get asked about that unit all the time, you know, what power supply to use. And typically we all know that if you use any autonomous fan control system, 98% of you, or at least 97, I'll say, will usually be using uh, an individual drive system. So therefore this unit becomes all too easy to connect everything. And again, putting them in kit platform where we're doing it, where it's a bundle, I take all the guesswork aside, you're getting exactly what you need to assemble your units. Okay, so that pretty much sums up this unit. Now, as far as cable, I can't tell you how many how many questions I get a week on cable, but this cable is one that I could not wait to get in house, and this is my new five lead twenty gauge double shielded cable. Now, just for the record, guys, double shielded cable is basically all I have in my store. Um, I really do carry eighteen four single shielded. I honestly, that's not a cable that I sell too often because most of you guys validate the price difference. And honestly, double shielded. If you're dealing with plasma systems or if you're dealing with noisy environments, or in general, if you're just looking for the most bulletproof cable around, this is the way to go. Um, even my G540 pre-made motor cables, I get asked about them all the time. They utilize signal cable, which is just a fancy term for saying double shielded. I've covered this in other videos. I've even opened the cables up, showed everybody. That's why they are made the way they are, and that's why, of course, they cost what they do. Um, this cable is no different. The quality here is impeccable. Let's go over it. Of course, just like my 16.4 and 16.3 double shielded spindle cables and my 18.4 double shielded cable, you've got your Mylar foil. That's on the inside uh, shielding. And then, of course, on the exterior shielding, you can see it right here, which is your tin braided copper. OK, tin braided copper is a much higher density shielding. OK, works as a Faraday cage when you properly install it. That being said, you're going to want to contact a lead here with solder. Now, let's just cover real basics real quick. I get asked about soldering all the time. I know there's many different skill levels when it comes to soldering. You got guys that can attach a lead and then you have guys that can attach a lead. There's a difference, I understand that, and I realize that it's not for everybody. That being said, if you can't solder, I think you should be honest with your own uh, abilities in the sense that don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, if you've never done it before, and many of you haven't, ask. You know, it's, it's easy to do. Um, sometimes being humble, you'll learn a lot faster. If you're a type that thinks you can get away with doing it yourself, you've never done it before, and working with double shielded cable or shielded cable in general, you're going to find it's tedious, guys. It's not easy, and it's something to really think about getting involved with. Um, when I see guys using crimp connectors on grounds, all I keep thinking of is how much resistance they're creating. You don't use crimp connectors with CNC. I've said this numerous times. Other manufacturers do it. I highly recommend against it because the thing about a crimp connector that has to be realized is you're not using one. You're using multiple crimp connectors, which means every crimp connector you put in your system, you're just building up resistance. And resistance yields higher EMI uh, susceptibility so you want to look at that when we're dealing with precision electronics take take in, into account no different than if you were building an EKG machine you know for, for uh, your, your heart that's the easiest way to look at it. if you're using it for medicine you'd want it to be as precise as possible well CNC we're building automated automated robots so and most of you guys are doing it for business use and for production so if you're doing it under those pretenses take into consideration what you're doing with building and again this cable when assembled correctly will yield the highest performing system you can have um, and usually when you look at other manufacturers you'll find that the cost is directly reflected to it um, this cable does have of course my interior design twine and that goes right down the center of the cable to give you an idea you can see it before I peeled everything back you can see how that twine let me see if I can get the focus in right there there it is you can see that twine is right inside there, right in the center of where the leads are. The leads then go around it, and that just reduces the amount of actual stress on the internal conductors, mainly by friction when this cable flexes. Okay, my plasma guys out there who are hooking up THCs and dealing with other accessories, this cable five lead will easily handle the majority of, of the versions that are out there. Also for my guys with mills that want to integrate um, relays and also integrate Mach 3 manipulation of speed, uh, this cable really can't be overlooked because again, five leads, you can do pretty much everything with one actual cable run. So just keep that in mind. Um, overall, you got tin braided copper, again, in, as far as inside the conductors, uh, just a real high quality cable, no different than uh, the actual other cables I have. But again, with more leads, it gives you guys 
more uh, adjustments as far as how you actually want to set up your system and what kind of applications you can go with, whether it be for inputs, if you're dealing with switches, you name it, you've got it. Of course, PVC casing is rated to 300 volt, 80 degrees Celsius temp rating. So again, full commercial rating and you guys are all set. So again, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, I do have some more components coming. I plan on, of course, uh, going over uh, more detailed uh, listings as far as what we're actually looking at in the future. I do have a couple uh, tricks up my sleeve, so to speak, as far as what we've got coming out. But these I know are going to be super helpful to many of you as you go to move forward with system builds. Um, it keeps things simple. And again, the kit platform, if you do have any questions, just ask. There's always going to be questions. I realize there's no cookie cutter systems. I say it all the time to everybody, and it's true, there isn't. Uh, each system is individual. Each client's applications are individual. Therefore, the best way to get the best service, of course, just ask me and I'll point you in the right direction. For all my subscribers, guys, I love you. Uh, if you guys have any questions, keep the messages coming. I can't emphasize that enough. I will get back to you as soon as possible, of course. Uh, time t In a timely fashion, for me now, is easily within 24 hours. Sometimes it's a little longer than that. And I tell you guys all that because now the shop is really busy. Uh, I have a lot of stuff going on at once, but I will get back to you. We can either schedule a call to talk if we're dealing with a system issue or, you know, just shoot me a message and uh, we'll cover whatever details we need to. But once again, if you guys need to contact me, the contact information will be below in the description. My email is storm2313 at gmail.com. And of course, that is my direct email. And of course, uh, you can also contact me through Dealers Direct. That's my eBay store. Its link will be below as well. I'm going to have in the description um, all of the actual combos that I'll have with this power supply. Uh, the cable will be down there as well. So if you need to look for anything, it's all right there. Point and click and check everything out. Once again, guys, thank you all. Take care.